Hello, in this episode of the RX8 project, we are hopefully sorting the RX8's biggest issue, and that's its ignition system. Since I've bought this car, and the reason the car was sold to me cheaply is it has some running issues. So it had idling issues, it stutters up high, and just generally wasn't running 100%. So hopefully, we will put some new coils, leads, and plugs on, and it will solve all of our problems but first we need to know why the rx8 ignition system is so important to the car so on the rx8 as you know it uses a lot of fuel and if that fuel is not getting burnt efficiently and properly then there's a massive sort of cascade of effects that leads all the way down to complete and utter engine failure so it starts with the unburnt fuel so the fuel is not being burnt, then it goes, stays in to the rotor housing. This can wash away all the oils that's been injected by the OMP, which as you know, is not a good thing on these cars, and then can go to cause carbon buildup and sticking seals. So it's just this is where it starts to sort of snowball up. So with the sticky seals, the carbon buildup, everything just starts to get worse and worse and worse. This will then lead to uh, clogging the cat up. Now, when the cat clogs up, this is why decats are actually quite a good thing on these guys, although they stink. Um, when the cat clogs up, it starts to heat the engine up. The cats on these, when they start failing, go red hot. You can see them at night, look under the car, and it is glowing red. This heat transfers into the engine and starts cooking seals, and seals are what the RX-8 depend on. So what are some of the signs that your coils are failing? So they fail gradually, they don't just suddenly switch off, the spark will just become less and less and less and less, till it gets to a stage where, like this one, where you have a bit of a loss of power, the MPG is pretty shocking on this, but that was also because I think the brakes were stuck on. Um, you get idle issues, you get high RPM issues. So on this past 5,000 RPM, it stutters a bit as the sparks basically getting blown out because it's not strong enough. Um, the cat's getting hot, as we said earlier, and also it will start to flood because the fuel is just sitting in there and it, it just won't burn. So the coils in this car are an issue because Mazda cheaped out. The RX-7 coils were really expensive and they would last in an RX-7 something like 60,000 miles, where in the RX-8 they will last about 30,000 miles. So they are a consumable item and they need to be changed on a regular basis. So 20, if you're at 20,000 miles or so, I would start to look at changing them. It's, it's not that expensive and compared to an engine rebuild, it is cheap. Now the reason that these coils fail at 30,000 miles instead of like 90,000 miles for an average piston engine is because these sort of sit on average at 40,000 RPM, which means give or take every minute these will fire at 4,000 times. Whereas on a piston engine, they average about 2,500 RPM on a normal piston engine. So they will fire about 1,250 times per minute so these will fire these do three times as much work in the same time frame so that's why a normal core pack will last a normal car 90 100 000 miles and on a rotary they will last about 30 000. so spark plugs now the rx8 uses special spark plugs and they need to be changed pretty much like 20 30 000 miles um they are also very important to the ignition system obviously um, the, the RX-8 uses its own special spark plugs at about 25 quid each and that is the RE7C-L and the RE9B-T. The L stands for leading and the T stands for trailing. The leading one does most of the work and the trailing one will tidy up the burn towards, towards the end of the rotation. Uh, the L, to remember which holes they go in, the T stands for top and the L goes for lower. So that's how I remember which way round they go. Now, leads, they are quite important, more important than you think, due to the location of the spark plugs, which are down the bottom of the engine, you get all the road dirt and stuff flying up. If they don't seal properly, then you'll start getting corrosion happening, and I've seen these 
sort of terminals completely corroded away, rusted away, so the spark plug's not doing anything. I mean, I bought some fancy expensive MSD ones from Ryan Rotary. You don't need to go to this extent, but just keep an eye, if you're spending all the money on the um, spark plugs and coil plugs, coil packs, to spend a little bit more and get the leads as well. So, on to the coil packs. These are super important on the RX-8, as we've said. And they've gone through a few, di a few different changes over the years. So when I first started getting into rotaries 2017-2018-ish, their D585 kit was the one to have. It, they use uh, the LS203, I can't remember, ignition coils, and it has their own harness and unique um, coil leads. Um, these used to work well, lots of companies did warranties on them and they were good. They did need the dwell adjusting on a, on a remap to get 100% out of them, which a lot of people did and I think a lot of people are now regretting now because if you want to go back to OEM or any other options, you've got to take that dwell timing back. But the D585 kits are still available for some reason. They've staffed about, about 400 quid or so, but warranty they say they're warrantied and stuff a lot of people but the warranty claims are quite hard to get through now i would personally stay clear i know a lot of people still swear by them but when they have one fail they won't like them anymore the next option is going for the oem type c coils the type c is the latest revision they work great they last for 30 odd 30 ish thousand miles and they just drop them in plug them on and they work fine um they aren't the cheapest in the world from a deal of about 560 quid i think um racing beat europe europe yep have them up for sale for about 380 quid so welcome to go for those no one will judge you at all but just make sure you buy them from someone reputable because there are a lot of fakes about same with the d585s lots of fakes of those which is why i would stay clear and the third option in the uk Abroad, you've got all the AEMs. America, you've got a lot more options. There's a lot more sort of out there. But in the UK, we've only really got three. And the third is the RRP coil. Now, I was the first person to actually ever run the first RRP coil. I had their development packs on my Bridgeported RX-8. And they were brilliant. So that's why I've gone for these. Again, these are the Mark IV ones. Um, all Jap Japanese internals. Um, produce tons of spark on stock dwell so they should be fantastic they are i think 320 quid or so for these um, they use the stock mounts so you don't need to change anything and they use the stock coils um, coil leads so it is a plug and play like the own type c but the big plus is as long as you own them um, you've got warranty on them and scott and carl are pretty good about them so these are what we'll be installing on the car today. A quick side note with coils, if you are going from like me, from D585s to OEM Type-C or the RRP coils, just make sure they have not been mapped to dwell. I was speaking to the previous owner of this car and the map that's on this car was done before the 585s went on. So this has not been mapped to the 585s. So I can safely put these on. Now, if we look down there, we can see the D585 coils there. So we're going to have to take the intake tubing off. I'll probably take the strap brace off just to get a bit more clearance, but we'll see about that. And we also need to take the wheel off to actually get access to the spark plugs. spark plugs with the blue ignition coil so we will start to uh, 
take those the spark plugs out and give them a quick check. So something I should have done before I took everything apart is test the coils. I'm changing them whatever. Um, I've actually just noticed I've got one and there's a different color. I'm changing them whatever, but I've started taking everything apart. Now these are from Laser. They are ignition testers. You click them onto the spark plug itself and then you click the HT lead onto these. What I will actually do is I'll put it all together and I'll show you what good coils will look like with these. So here we have our coils. It's not ideal that they're all ones a different colour. So something has definitely been going on with this kit. So I cannot wait to get it taken off. So this is the spark plugs out. These are the leading. They all sort of look okay. And these are the trailing. Again. They all look just about okay. The leading may be a little rich. So that is the next stage. We'll put the new plugs in. And then if someone asks what, how many extensions you need to get the plugs out, the answer is yes. You need pretty much everything you've got to get in there. As you can see, just to the right of the plug hole, there is an L, so that indicates leading and trailing. And here's a side-by-side -side of new and old. So that's the new spark plugs installed, nice and easy. I talked them up to just below 15 foot-pounds. Uh, just to make sure that you feel the crush washer sort of collapsing a bit. And put a tiny bit of oil or a tiny bit of lube on the plugs when you install them. So next we've got to rip these coils out, which I'm quite excited about. They do have, 505s are, have an auxiliary earth as well, and all this adapter harnesses to unplug. So I'll just start unplugging stuff, and we'll see when we get this done. So here we go, here is the D585 system all taken off. So these are the coils. Obviously there has been an issue because this one is not the same as these ones, or these ones are not the same as this one. So if one of them's failed or three of them failed, then the others can't be too far behind. So that's an issue. This is another reason I'm not a D585 fan. This is the adapter harness you need to run. There's so many sort of places where there could be an issue. So that goes in the bin. And these are the coil pack, the uh, spark leagues. These all look in pretty good condition. So they shouldn't have been the problem. So now we get the RRP Mark IVs stuck in there. So as you can see, the plug wires lay where they want to go. So you don't, it's not too confusing. You can't really plug them in the wrong way because it doesn't quite work. So we'll do that. So we'll plug, I'm gonna plug them in, starting from the back, I think first, plug them in, put them onto the um, pin there, and then just slowly just work my way to the front. So there we go, it is all back together now. All the cables run nicely, intakes back on. One thing that was quite handy with these D585s is they did label the order, so that made everything a little bit easier, plugging the leads in. But now it's time to start it. I put two of those testers in the, uh, in the second rotor, so we will um, see how those light up. As you can see those lit up nicely so I will take those testers off. They are very handy for diagnosing issues. I probably I should have put them on beforehand but I just kind of want to get on with things. So I take those off, plug the leagues on. You can put direct dielectric uh, grease on the spark plugs if you wish, um, especially with the location they are. It, it might do a bit of good. I'm not at the moment just because I want to rule out any issues if this does not fix the, the problems I'm, I've been having. So I'll put the car back on the ground now and then we'll take it for a spin. So I'm back from the test drive and the car is tons better. It seems to be pulling all the way to red line a bit better. Not that I can push it too much because it's nasty out there. So it's, yeah, it's pulling well. There's a couple of bits of hesitation, but it has 
an awful pop bang map on it. So the next stage is to shoot it over to Scott at Ryan Rotary Performance and get him to have a look, take that map off, put a stock map on, and then we can just see how she's going from there. But I think we are getting there now with this car. So it's uh, she starts beautifully hot and cold, which is the main thing you want in an RX-8. So now we've got to, to update the board with how much we have spent. So I got all the ignition parts from Ryan Road Performance. So the coils are 320. The sparks are 100. And the leads, I think, were about 90-ish. Uh, yeah, about 90. So it's not cheap, but it is peace of mind. And I know I don't need to worry about it for another 30,000 miles. The plugs, not so much. The plugs probably every, probably once a year, you want to really do the plugs. Now for the good bit, ticking off the job. So we can tick that off. I ticked off the window as well earlier because that started working again, which is nice. So the only things we have left are the slave, which it seems to be self-bleeding. So we might wait on that and fixing the door lock. Oh, and let's add map so we can get rid of that map. So, so far, add up, the car owes us £2,189, which for an RX-8 with pretty low mileage in good condition, with some nice mods apart from the exhaust and the map, I'm happy with that. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you made it this far, please hit the subscribe. It means a lot to us. Uh, hit like and leave a comment about the RX-8. It's always good to hear what people think of these. And we will see you next time. Don't know what it's going to be, but I'll see you then.